Hey everybody, Justin here with a quick interior flight with the DJ Avada. This is the first battery that I've gone through. Um, so once you take off, the first thing I noticed is you're at least going to be about four feet off the ground on the takeoff. So if you're trying to take off inside something smaller than that, it could be a problem. Swipe down on the goggles on the side menu. Got a little helper here today. And that allows you to get into the top menu on the goggles. Um, which enables head tracking. Now, if you look at the top of the screen on here, you can see some lines with a little arrow. And what that does is shows your head position in relation to forward. The dot on the screen there is indicative of the motion controller. So when you tilt backwards or pull towards you, the dot goes up. And when you tilt forwards, it goes down. So here we want to go up. We're going to look uh, behind the shower curtain right here. Do have one firehouse strobe mounted to the aircraft this time. Uh, I wanted to go worst case scenario, so I went with mounting it on top of the drone and shining it upwards, thinking that potentially you would get the light off the ceiling. And it did all right um, in floors that have texture, but floors that don't have texture, uh, you'll see here in a minute, or anything that's black or dark colored under it, it becomes an issue. So this room lights off just light from outside. I'm using the head tracking here just to look around. So move the head left to right and it looks wherever I'm going there. You can notice the arrow at the top will move some from side to side. Uh, not a whole lot to clear in this room. And you can see it's getting a little squirrely there. It lost the vision for just a second and kind of started bumping into stuff, but recovered well. So let's go into the baby's room here. Now a lot of, a lot of dark stuff in here. So good textures on the crib there. Got almost no light in this room with the curtains closed. Now, black recliner made out of leather. Notice when we get over this in the bottom right, you'll probably see vision sensor lost or something like that. Um, it's really just floating around on its own here. I'm not making it move, so it's getting a little bit out of control there. Look behind the recliner, nobody hiding there. Uh, let's potentially get away from this recliner because it's not stabilize very well there. So we're gonna plan over here, get a closet to look in. Not a lot going on in this room. Now that carpet that's under us there, great pattern. Vision sensors do an awesome job once you get over top of that. But all right, let's go. Let's get out of this room. Go to another room. So over the wood floors, it still did all right there. Good texture on the floors, so vision sensors. Now we're back in a room with a lot of light. Notice how much stable it feels there as far as just the video. Um, okay, we've got an open closet, so can we get in the open closet? It's not very open. Got the motion controller forward to go down, pull the trigger to go forward. Bumped into the wall a little there. Didn't get stuck to it. Looked in the closet, nobody hiding there. Turn back around. Again, good light in this room. So overall, the camera view is fairly stable. It's really easy to control this. Head tracking, looking to the left, but continuing to fly forward. Nobody hiding there. Now we'll go into the other bathroom where the shower curtain is closed. There's only one way to look in the shower and that's gonna be up. So pull back on the motion controller, pull the trigger, up we go. And we'll be using the head tracking here once we get over top of this ledge. Now you'll see a bunch of wind blowing things around. So there's a little piece of a shampoo lock there. So we can see nobody in the shower. But I'm starting to get a little stuck to the ceiling here. It's not bad. It's still letting me go down. But then I didn't even get far enough forward. That container flew into the sink there from the downdraft. So it does put out quite a bit of air. Um, but there we go. Got got uncaught there from the ledge and really once you go back into the light it's easy so i'm going to cut the video on this room and we're going to restart it going down the stairs so this is a, a difficult place for the drone i've got motion sensing lights in the basement so they're actually going to turn on once we get down here on their own which is helpful but not for the test this is still with the strobe only mounted to the top of the aircraft so with the light again you can see how stable it feels when it can see everything. Notice the infrared sensor is down there at the bottom, the red number telling me I'm about three and a half feet off the ground. All right, now we're moving into the bar area here. Grout tile, that black grout 
or the grade route with the black tile um, helps a lot. But I think there's either the mirror influences of some, so that fly with caution red block down in the bottom right, you'll see it over the vision system calibration. Um, it's not too happy here. It's really getting a little drifty on me. And once it gets into that crazy drift mode, the only way to recover is to move quickly somewhere else. So you got to point in direction, pull that trigger and go. So we're going to, we're going to try to open this door by bumping into it lightly. It's a very lightweight door. It's open. As you can see, that did not work. And we are now on the ground. So let's take off again. This time, taking the firehouse strobe from the top of the drone and put it on the bottom of the drone. And we're going to fly into a carpeted room. This is the home theater. Not a whole lot of light that you can actually get forward facing. So we really can't see what we're doing here. I know where I'm at. Otherwise I'd be running into walls for sure if I was in a stranger's house here. But there's the back of the couch. Vision system is still having that error, which the air popped up when we were flying in the second bathroom going over top of the shower and actually touched on the, the top of the shower area there. So um, we'll calibrate that in a second after this flight and see how much better it does with the vision system back to normal and lights on the top of the bottom. But for now, just light on the bottom. Now the room we're entering now is a laundry room slash gym. And you can see the floor reflection there. This is an epoxy floor, so it is super reflective. And I was worried that the drone would not do well in here just because it can't see what the floor is. But so far, so good. Um, I noticed the higher that you are off the ground, the better the vision sensor system does. So at this height, there is some metallic flake texture in that floor. So back into here, and, and this is kind of an example of where it starts getting bad if you get too close to the ground. So going up the stairs, this gray carpet, good texture on the walls. It's a little bit bumpy going up there, but it handles it. And we're back into the light again, and great stability when we can see what we're doing here. So just to show that agility, we can go around the surface pretty quickly in clear rooms that are well lit very easily. Using that motion controller, you can see the dot is forward. So I'm looking a little bit left here, just see what's around. Now, what happens if you get too close to something and you bump into a wall pretty hard? Okay, so first flight, all I had was a firehouse strobe light, solid white on the bottom, and it didn't do great. I do have a pretty hard to read surface, but it should do good on that brick over there. Now I've added one on the front, and we'll see how much we can see with both of those on. All right, so first thing I do, I go into that menu and swipe down to get the head tracking menu and test the head tracking out so it looks like it's good. Again, we've got a light on the top facing forward and we've got a light on the bottom facing down. So I'm going to fumble around here with the goggles on and turn off the lights in the basement. This is purely the light from the strobes. And here we go. We're going to fly over the same area that I flew before just to see how the stability varies with the light downward and a light forward compared to when we got back here behind the bar the first time and it got a little out of control there. So we're behind the bar now and using that head tracking to look around. Let's go ahead and turn and look in the mirror again and see maintaining stability, no drift. So really having those two lights on there made a, a huge difference. Instead of the door, let's try the window this time. This is about a foot and a half opening. No problem for the Avada. We can see a little bit better in here. It's still fairly short range. Notice the projector on the ceiling we could not see before. We can really make out the couch. We can tell that somebody could have been hiding in this corner back here. So let's use that head tracking and look down. Nope, no bad guys. You can see the home theater screen now a little bit. You can see chairs, the beanbag chair, the speaker cabinets a lot better. Another good hiding spot over here behind the beanbag chair. 
a lot more stability with the light downward and the light forwards. So we'll shoot the gap again. This is about two feet open, black surface. Now at this height, I'm pretty much at the minimum takeoff height flying around. There's the head tracking to the left. Let's get a little closer to the mirror here. So it really didn't do anything crazy there, staring into the mirror itself, head tracking. Turn back around here. And we're gonna get close to the ground and see how, how close we have to get before it starts to lose that vision sensor with this epoxy four. Looking to the right. Now, right here, you'll notice the red comes up in the box on the bottom. See how it's drifting? It's starting to go sideways. So it really started to lose control through this area, but try to zip out of there as fast as I can, get back over some more texture, get up a little higher. Now we're back, it's fairly stable again. Kicked up some dust from back over there. Uh, here are the stairs. Notice we're already in a state of failure there, so I'm gonna zip out here a little bit further and try to get a lock back on the vision sensors, which is successful. And we're gonna go back to the stairwell here and attempt to go up the stairs in complete pitch black with one light on the top, one light on the front. So here we go. And see the warning came on there again, start losing it. So we're, you gotta keep a good distance between the bottom of the drone and whatever's on the ground down there. And that seems like that's the only way really to keep stable. Now we're here, I'm not sure why it got crazy there for a second, but it did. All right, so we're coming back around here. We've gained that lock back again, looking for our landing area. And the landing area is gonna be that that book, that photography book there on the, on the couch for this particular one. So we get over top of it, hold our landing button, look down, we're not quite over top of it. Let's spin a 360 here and get over it again. So now we're over top of it. Spin it around. And try to lock again here. Hold the button. Down it goes. Very slowly. Sometimes it struggles if it's not sure what's under it. But now we're down. So here's what it looks like. The amount of light being put out. Just the firehouse strobe. One on the bottom. One on the front. Did okay. I don't know if it needs more light or maybe uh, less flicker for the vision system, but it definitely got a little squirrely there. Uh, I do want to show you the floor in here though, because it lost it first in this room. And there's what that looks like to the vision system. It's a glossy floor. So not the best to be tracking over for sure where every other room here we had gray carpet in this room so that looks pretty good there's no light on the iphone right now and then it does great over this pattern because you can see it and then we've got tan carpet in here and you can see that's it's done a pretty good job lighting up this room